Back in July, the video by Umami Alex in TikTok went viral, talking about picking the right format to watch Oppenheimer so we could avoid Kroppenheimer. I was actually agreeing with the idea since the fact that Christopher Nolan always shoots the movie with the native aspect ratio, but here's the problem. There is no way I could get my hands on the 5070 IMAX theater since I was in South Korea. Theater that projects film barely exists here unless it's an institutional place which I guarantee won't play Oppenheimer with that format. The only viable option I got to watch the film is to watch it in Seoul, Yongsan CGV. Claimed to be the biggest commercial IMAX screen in Asia with the IMAX later dual format, which support the native aspect ratio that Nolan always intended for. As you probably might know, South Korea is one of the films where Oppenheimer was released late. There is no official reports why, although some speculated it was celebration of Liberation Day from Japan, which tied a lot with the film about the man who created a bomb for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. CGV released its pre-book for the IMAX laser two weeks ahead for 5th and 28th of August. I was an hour late when I discovered that they had started the pre-sales ticket and all of the good seats were booked, which is impressive considering it had a 24-hour non-stop screening. And the day came, I booked for the midnight screening and it feels surreal like I was transported back to Avengers Endgame because on weekdays, the waiting hall was fully packed. Into the film, even with a not so comfortable sitting position, I was totally immersed with the film. Watching it with around 600 people that day was the greatest experience I had in my viewing journey. But perhaps you could already tell that I really adore this film. I really thought it was the best film in 2023 so far. Destroying across the spider force from the top spot. The direction, performance, story, production design, score. Even with the lengthy runtime, it doesn't have one moment where the screw was loose. And from the moment I exit the building, I knew that I'm going to rewatch Oppenheimer again. But this time, I thought about what if I watch it not on the tallest screen possible, but on the widest one. You see, CGV itself has been known to be a pioneer in developing new format of theater in the 2000s. Through the official Korean CGV website, there are six theater formats that I believe to be developed by the CGV team themselves, creating a unique, different experience than other theater formats. There were initially two options to choose, which are the Screen X or Starium. The Screen X itself is known to be a theater format with three wide screens surrounding the theater, where you could be fully immersed into the world of the film. However, as I checked, it turned out that it was a non-Screen X screening, meaning that the film will be only projected like a usual theater without the right and left side. And so I was only left with Starium. A bit of history or Starium, it was in 2009 before the IMAX expanded for commercial multiplex business. CGV tried to offer an immersion like nothing ever before. With a wider screen and better surround sound, the Starium was born. It held the Guinness World Record for the largest 35mm screen when they still use film projector in Yongdungpo CGV, which had the size of 31.38 times 13 meter, even wider compared to the general IMAX dual laser. The problem is now that the Yongdupo CGV is closed and I am only left with the theater in Sandum City, Busan that had the size of 27 times 11.2 meter. Not that big compared to the IMAX laser but still wider than other IMAX theater in Sandon or single laser projector. And I got a chance two weeks later to watch Oppenheimer in the stadium screening and compared to the IMAX theater, the atmosphere was dead with almost no one inside. And so to the ultimate question, which is more immersive, the wide or taller screen? In favor of the wider, the film won't take you as much as the IMAX film due to the constant changing of aspect ratio. One of the things I always try to bear for film partially shot with IMAX camera is the changing aspect ratio at certain times. But Nolan is a bit different here. Nolan doesn't have the rule in terms of scenes, rather opting to shoot as many shots with an IMAX camera as possible. The result is a jarring transition between the IMAX and non-IMAX aspect ratio. The people sitting on the best seats perhaps would not have that problem. But for me who is sitting in the side row, it could be a bit distracting to adjust our eyes back and forth. But when the film is presented in the taller screen, it's amazing how immersive it becomes. I was fully in awe with the tall presentation and it seems like there's no way to escape the giant screen unless you close your eyes. With the stadium experience, it doesn't feel that way. Indeed, a wider screen gives more of the sense of wonder, exactly how you would become immersed into a 360 VR experience. But in films, I highly doubt that you would look at the right or left side of the screen. Instead, you focus on what is happening, 
to follow the story, which in most cases will be placed on the center of the screen. This is why I only went to screen X once for the screening of Avatar The Way of Water. Indeed, as immersive as it was to be surrounded by 270 degree panoramic screens to fill Pandora, there's really a story for us to follow. It's fortunate enough for the film because a quarter of the film are just about the exploration on the sea of Pandora. But when the story started to get going, I ignored the left and right screen, especially in scenes where subtitles become important in a non-English speaking country. And it honestly felt like I was watching on the film on an IMAX or even a regular theater. But visuals are only half of a film. You need the perfect sound system to get you transported into the film's world. And I can't imagine how many times I went to a theater with a bad sound system. And it actually takes me out a lot from the film despite its great visuals. Of course, it's not the film's fault, but rather the theater's management. And I'm not saying this because stadium sound system is poorly managed. In fact, I've actually gone to the stadium theater twice at the Busan International Film Festival for the screening of Inari Tubardo and Alan Gurari Nobody's Hero. The sound was fantastic, but compared to the IMAX laser, it made the stadium theater less immersive. The first difference is the speaker type that IMAX used. Despite having less speakers than stadium, the speakers that IMAX used are huge. The size of it created the best and loud effect that IMAX described to put a vibration into your bone. Meanwhile, the stadium sound system are a lot smaller. Even with a decent amount of positioning, it can be compared to the immersive sound that IMAX offers. Interior design also plays a role in the sound. The IMAX theater is designed for everyone inside to feel a similar experience in terms of sound. In stadium, a play like regular theater where you have to get a good seat to have that same amount of sound. And so, through my own experience, I feel that IMAX itself is much more immersive compared to the wider stadium screen. Not only because of its taller aspect ratio that fills your vision, but also the audio itself makes it more stimulating to the real life experience. However, on the fairer side, the reason why IMAX easily takes the high spot is due to the choice of film. You see, Oppenheimer is marketed a film shot on IMAX, and Christopher Nolan urged people to watch it with that format because that's what it was intended to be. Shot with an IMAX camera, it would be easily transferred for the IMAX theater rather than calibrated again in the post-production for a different theater format. Yet, does it really matter though on what theater format is more or less immersive? I found that I was still stuck into the film on my second watch, even without the need of the IMAX format. Nolan put every aspect of the storytelling near perfect in its 180 minute runtime. I don't think I could compare the immersiveness of these theater formats if I watched a much less engaging film. Films that are deemed to not attract an audience because of its failure in mastering film storytelling. Entering the later week in most territories, it is natural for Oppenheimer to be replaced by other upcoming films, especially with the IMAX format. Seeing Oppenheimer in the biggest screen possible is truly an experience. But no matter what format you're watching, best believe that you'll have a similar spiritual journey to the people who are lucky enough to watch Oppenheimer in its native screening. After all, it's the audiovisual representation on the screen that matters the most, and theater format is just another medium to translate that presentation.